Hi, everybody, and welcome to the Kidney Coach YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us. I am Fiona Chin, and I'm joined by... Dr. Matt Lyon, great to be here with you guys. So the thing that we wanted to speak today, and it's a bit of a technical thing, but it's something that really excites me, is something called Clotho. It's not from Star Wars, but it <laughs> reminds me of a Star Wars character. Do you know, I actually think it was named after a Greek goddess, if I'm That's not... That's exactly what it comes from. Is it? I, yeah. that, for some reason that's floating around in the back of my mind. Is she like one of the three famous Greek mythology or something? Yep. And she decides, that's right, she decides when people are born and when they die. And that makes so much sense about Clotho. Is that right? Right. It's so huge because this is like the longevity gene. It is. It is. So what's really cool about Clotho and how they, it was only just, well, it was, it's new. When I say new, it was discovered 20 years ago. But I first heard about Clotho. Duncan and I, um, Duncan is the uh, co-author on the Kidney Disease Solution. He and I headed to a seminar back when we could do seminars live in person. That was just in 2019. And um, there was this uh, head uh, nephrologist that had come out from the States and she started talking about this thing called Clotho. And at the time, I'd never heard of Clotho before. And she was talking about how exciting it was as a potential um, diagnostic marker of picking up kidney disease early, because that's the big issue with kidney disease, that unless you're having your um, glomerular filtration rate tested all the time, people have no idea if they've got kidney failure or not, because it's often quite a silent disease and it's often Often people, like my poor old Nana, went in for a hip operation. She gave me her blood test to look at. She was in, you know, stage four kidney disease and no one had told her. So, and, and, I, and I don't know about you, Matt, but in clinic, I see this all the time. Patients come in, I get them to have blood tests and they come back and there's often, you know, they're in stages two, three kidney failure and they have no idea. No one's told them. Um, it is, it is freakishly common. It's really common. And um, clotho is a uh, potential marker for picking up kidney disease early. And that's what this nephrologist was really excited about. So um, should we get in, we'll get into, we won't get too scientific on you. We'll do a, a high level flyby of what clotho is. So clotho is a protein and it's found in mammals and it's produced by the clotho gene so clotho gene produces the protein clotho and the discovery of clotho was made in 1997 and it was initially identified as an anti-aging gene and that's what's really cool so we know there's two major anti-aging uh, enzymes or genes in the body there's telomerase or telomeres that you probably know they they cap the end of your genes and the longer the telomere at the end of the gene the biological age of that person is younger and clotho is the other one that they've found so um clotho is the same thing they find that the higher the levels of clotho in someone the um biological age of that person is younger so clotho was originally identified as a gene in mice and it was a um what they found is a gene defect in the clotho expression resulted in um, effects on these mice that resembled human aging. So cognitive impairment, osteoporosis, um, hearing um, loss and shortening of lifespan. So that they found it in mice first. And that it became very grumpy and they started talking very loud. Yes. <laughs> yeah. What? They, um, these poor little mice had this, um, they'd age and die really quickly, but they found that they had really low levels of clotho. And then, though, they found that in another um, group of mice that had what we call a clotho overexpression, so that gene that regulates um, the production of the protein clotho, if that gene was overactive and overexpressive, where these mice had more levels of clotho, those mice had up to a 30% increase in their lifespan, which was really cool. Wow. So... That's what we know now, even in humans, that clotho levels are closely related to age and its serum level is low in the first decade. And then it increases and reaches its peak when we get between the ages of 20 and 40. And then it starts to decrease thereafter. And we know that in humans, clotho deficiency has been associated with the development of heart disease, diabetes, high blood pressure, chronic kidney disease, osteoporosis, anemia, and certain cancers. Mm. Did you want to add anything to that, Dr. Matt? No, I'm just, I'm excited to talk about how people can 
turn on that clotho gene. And I'm thinking just, I was thinking about, you know, both Fiona and I come from, um, she's a naturopath. I was a chiropractor and I was also trained in Chinese medicine and acupuncture and the, the historic, um, the, the stories of these sages who defied the aging process in the, in the, uh, in the Chinese culture is was always fascinating to me and how people could like age well. So they might have the appearance of aging, but they were more virile. They were more strong. They were more passionate in life and very resilient to disease and to stress. It really turns, it, it just turned on my intellectual fascination. And um, I remember one time when I was studying in graduate school, I met this um, incredible Qigong master and he was over 80 years old and he had been training at this Udong monastery since he was seven years old. And I, I would go to his office and he had this ability to transmit this heat from his hands. And he'd actually been studied at UCLA. You can look him up. We can put the, put the link to the research around him in the feed below. But I mean, so I look at these guys who sort of defied the odds and all the typical American and probably Australian sort of dynamics of aging where we feel bad, our joints hurt, you know, a cognitive decline, like all the main diseases that Fiona talked about to these people that could defy the aging process. And it appears that clotho plays a major part of that. And oh. so I was hoping we could talk about so what are some of the common themes that people like him and other people, or people like us can do to sort of turn that on, especially for people who have kidney disease, like what can we do? So if we know if that's low, we're more inclined to have poor prognosis in kidney disease, how can we turn it on? Yeah, we should definitely talk about that. So I'm gonna hand that over to you in a sec. So what I wanna do quickly before I hand that over is just quickly talk about the role of clotho in kidney disease and why why we in in potentially if you're someone with kidney disease why potentially boosting your clotho levels using these things that dr matt is about to talk about why that's so important so there's unequivocal evidence in experimental animals that both acute kidney injury so aki and chronic kidney disease ckd are states of systemic clotho deficiency so let me say that again there is evidence that in and it's done in animal trials so far that Kidney disease being acute or chronic is a direct result of a clotho deficiency. Got that? That's, I mean, that's a that's breakthrough. And, and again, why has your nephrologist not told you about clotho? Takes up to 30 years from a new discovery to get, make its way into the medical textbooks to then be taught to people. So we're still probably 10 years off between new medical graduates coming through and even learning about that stuff. That's potentially why you've not heard about clotho. Most of clotho in the body is produced in the kidneys, which means the more kidney damage that you have, the less clotho that they can make, which then results in further damage and then you get stuck in this cycle, right? So soluble clotho is the main functional form and in the circulation and you can find that in the blood, urine and cerebral spinal fluid. And evidence shows that clotho deficiency develops very, very early in the stages of chronic kidney disease as a response to albuminuria. So album, albumin found in the urine and kidney inflammation or even inflammation in the body. So clotho um, deficiency results from um, this high albumin levels in the urine or kidney inflammation or inflammation anywhere in the body. And as Matt and I will probably get into on another video, inflammation is such a massive cause of chronic long-term disease. So one of the things that um, we're hoping will come about in the future of um, medicine and Western medicine is to be able to test clotho levels because if we can see a deficiency of that early on, we may be able to detect kidney disease far earlier um, and then we'll have a better diagnosis for people with kidney disease and then we can get in and treat it earlier. So I think that's all I really wanted to say about clotho. Its major actions is it, it protects the cells and the kidneys. It reduces oxidative stress. Again, Matt and I will continue, um, talk about what oxidation and oxidative stress is in other videos. It's anti-fibrosis and prevents renal fibrosis, which is the scarring on the kidneys, which ultimately will lead to end-stage renal failure. It reduces inflammation and it protects against vascular um, calcification and mineral bone loss. And it inhibits phosphate absorption and promotes the excretion of phosphate in the urine. 
So that's really the big things in kidney. It does a whole pile of other things in the body. But yes, let's talk about how we can boost clotho levels naturally because that's the greatest thing is that we can actually do that. You know, this I love something you said. Um, it is true that um, ideas that are ahead of their time are not adopted by conventional culture for some time. And they're often met with resistance on the front end, which we've seen with most great visionaries and pioneers in science. So what's so cool about this conversation that Fiona and I are having with you is that this is like an amazing finding that you can now use to create more agency in your healing with kidney disease. And I, I mean, I don't know about you, but after hearing Fiona's description of Clotho, I'm like, I won't, I won't give you some of that. So <laughs> it's crazy because I love the Western physiological breakdown of it. And then for thousands of years, literally thousands of years, the Chinese, which to American physicians, and I shouldn't say American, Western traditional, uh, contemporary conventional medicine physicians are like, well, that doesn't make any sense. They had always posited that the kidneys were the source of vitality, of life. We have this word jing, which is a Chinese word for this essence of life, which sort of nourishes you from you know, birth to the time in which you transition in this body, but we're sort of designed to live well and to live fully and to express life and vitality and wisdom, which increases with age. So well-being can increase with age. And so it's so cool to hear this um, about how clotho is actually mainly, not exclusively, but mainly produced in the kidneys. And it really is one of these sort of fountains of youth or substances of youth. So yeah, let's talk about how to work with this. Isn't it cool how science and ancient philosophy start to say the same thing and we just express yeah. different, like like you in naturopathy, we always know that the kidneys are the producers of, we call it chi, but same sort of thing. It's that essence and it's the kidneys that nourish that. And now we can see that there's this clothogene and clothogene, clothoprotein, which is anti-aging, all produced in the kidneys. And then if you have any kidney disease, your ability for vitality may be reduced and so working on that and hence why you know if you've read the kidney disease solution we t we have so many of these ancient um chinese herbal medicines in there because that's how they function they all work at, at protecting and promoting kidney um chi and energy and that's how the chinese ancient ancient chinese cultures spoke about them but now modern science is catching up and we know that some of these herbs promote the production and, and help the gene expression which is just amazing so let's yeah. dive into the herbs dr matt which one do you want to start with because we've got a couple of amazing herbs in there that we could chat about yeah um so i've i'm super fascinated with with mushrooms in general like mycelium to me the way i sort of think of it they were like the original internet yeah and really, there's sort of this substrate of connection amongst all the plant kingdom and the soil. So literally regulating messages amongst forests and trees and other plants of which then animals were tuned into. So literally the original internet, the medicinal properties of mushrooms is far beyond the scope of this call, but cordyceps. Now cordyceps is a super cool mushroom that has been used for millennia. It's one of the royal highest herbs in Chinese medicine. And it does a whole lot of things, but maybe you can riff a little bit about um, its, you know, research and efficacy around boosting clotho. Yeah, well, I think they found that, so the way that they found that cloth, uh, that cordyceps, cordyceps uh, sinensis, um, increased clotho was they gave the mushroom to rats with high blood pressure. So they medically induced these poor rats with high blood pressure. And then they were treating them with cordyceps and they were actually looking at the effects on cordyceps of high blood pressure. But when they ran all the bloods on these um, little rats, what they found was that the cordyceps had increased clotho expression. So that G it had upregulated gene expression, so therefore that clotho gene produced more of the clotho um, protein. And what they found then is the kidney damage was significantly reduced, which, how cool is that? That's super, yeah. that's super cool. I mean, what's so amazing is the ancient wisdom said, take this herb, <laughs> this will boost longevity, which of course you're like, what? This sounds like snake oil, but it totally does. I think what's super fascinating to me because of my interest in the immune system as a 
as just another arm of the nervous system is so not only does it boost clotho cordyceps is so good at creating this regulatory effect in the immune system that the immune system has a lot of parts to it but in general if the immune system's depressed or low or ineffective it it has that trophoblastic effect of bringing it up and if in other parts of the immune system say they're too strong and too inflammatory it can relax that response and that's critical for inflammation with kidney health the other thing that i did not know i literally just learned this a couple days ago um i've been really honored and blessed to work with duncan and fiona in formulating the kygenesis kidney supplements and cordyceps is in there because their goal and what i wanted to help them with was to simplify what's in the kidney disease solution and sort of take the best of class of all of those herbs in there, condense it into very effective but affordable formulas. Well, Cordyceps sinensis is in there. Cordyceps sinensis is a type of cordyceps. And it also helps detoxify your body of heavy metals. I just learned this because it stimulates an enzyme called metallothionine. Now, here's why that's so important to me, because toxicity is like all over the place. It's in the air we breathe, the water we drink, the foods we eat, and heavy in the medications we take. Um, and this is not a comment on vaccines pro or con, but vaccines have tons of heavy metals in them. So we're, we're sort of accumulating these heavy metals and they for sure have a proclivity for the kidneys, meaning these heavy metals can bind in the kidneys. So here you have a natural plant that helps pluck toxins out of your body, so that you can do what you're designed to do, which is to self-heal and self-regulate. So there's so many pros here for kidney health with just one herb. Amazing. I know. I love, I love cordyceps, but I have to say my secret favorite uh, herb for clotho is foti. I don't know whether it's just the word of it. I learned foti back in many moons ago when I was studying um uh, natu naturopathy and herbal medicine and Foti was one of the herbs we learned and interestingly we learned Foti and I don't know whether you learned it this way too Matt but we learned it as you give it to people if they're going grey so it actually reduces that's right, yes. it, that's it, right. It, the Chinese name was Ho Sho Wu and it was for yeah greying of the hair because of its ability to to lift kidney yang yeah, and that's one of the things, again, um, and it sounds a little very different to how Western medicine talks, but um, kidneys nourish the health of the, the blood. The hair is the extension of the blood, but the colouring of the hair was a function of, uh, 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 the, was a feedback of the body of how vital the kidneys were. And so FOT works that way. So um, FOT, also known as Polygona multiflorum, if I've got yep. that right. Um, and it's... It, it's got a chemical in it, and the chemical is now. I'm going to have to say this properly: is tetrahydrostyboline glycoside, also known TSG for short. We'll stick with TSG, and it's that's the one that promotes the um, anti-graying of the hair. But it's a strong antioxidant and a free radical study um, scavenger. And a study in again, these are my studies. We haven't done a lot of work in humans yet, which is a shame, and it's. Um, I sound a bit cynical here, but it's because you can't patentize natural medicine. So there's not a lot of money to be made in doing lots of studies with herbal medicine. And that's why we don't see as many studies um, because drug companies, and fair enough, they're a business, right? They're looking at making money. And so you can't do that so much um, with herbal medicine. So that's my speech and why we're not seeing as many studies as I'd like to see in humans. But the study in aged mice found that when they gave this TSG from Boti for eight weeks, it reversed age-related decreases in clotho. So what's that saying is it increased the levels of clotho in their bloodstream. It increased the expression of clotho in the brain, heart, kidneys, testes, epididymis, and in a dose-dependent manner. So the more um, FOTI or this TSG from FOTI that they took, the more clotho expression the genes had, the more protein or the more clotho that they found. An examination of the organs also showed that this TSG improved disease-related changes in the organs. So that's wow. saying that um, this um, chemical constituent of FOTI actually improved the, you know, when a, a, an organ goes through a disease or it changes, that that reversed some of that. So that yeah. was how um, FOTI was working. And again, it's a, an animal study. 
And one of the things that Duncan, Dr. Matt and I are hoping to do in the next couple of years is some clinical trials um, using um, the products that we spoke about. So stay tuned for that. But in we definitely know in my studies that um, we saw this increase in gene, um, clotho gene expression, which is really, really cool. So two very cool herbs there. Yeah, super cool. I mean, really what we're talking about here is plant medicines that reverse the effects of aging and stress. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really critical for any of us who've had, in, who, you know, <laughs> we have human bodies and we're alive. It's, 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 it's so cool that we are endowed with this relationship with the plant world that works symbiotically with our biology. And the further we get from that with the standard American diet, plus stress, plus staring at screens all day, plus a pandemic, right? And all of a sudden stress adds up. So the body's ability to adapt to stress, to grow and get stronger and help us, you know, recover or adapt to disease, like talking about how the literally cellular changes because of the presence of a plant is just astonishing to me. And what's so cool is that whether it's cordyceps or foti or some of the other herbs that we use, each of those plants it's not just those singular substances. There's thousands of other molecules that all sort of link together in these constellations that by themselves wouldn't really do much. But in the wisdom of this plant, it sort of acts like this little information packet. It turns on our ability to self-heal. And, you know, I, I always think of genes as like a blueprint. Yeah. <laughs> And then the blueprint sort of has the design for how my house, which would be me or would be Fiona, will be built. And at any point, you know, I could have a good clotho gene, but if that gene gets tired out, now all of a sudden it's not going to produce that molecule. And so my house isn't going to be built to code with this blueprint. So we get help from nature and we get nature support. So, yeah, I just really dig it. And all of the herbs in that particular formula, formula, work to more effectively turn on and accentuate the properties of each of the other herbs. Meaning it's like when you're with a group of good friends and it yeah. brings out the best in you. This is one of the wisdoms of Chinese medicine. It's like, we don't just drop a bomb of a particular herb for its effect. It sort of comes in with a group of friends. It comes in with a posse. <laughs> and it- Yeah, dump the tail over and, and- Yeah, yeah. So it just, it's so cool how they work synergistically and then work on our body. I mean, I could talk for hours about this, but Foti and Cordyceps, Clotho, really, really, really powerful, empowering, natural stuff that you can do to help sort of turn back the clock of stress and its negative impacts on kidneys and a whole bunch of other cells. Yeah. And actually one thing, one last thing I want to say, um, and this is a free thing that you can do, the other way that anybody can do to increase clotho is to exercise so a human study this was i've done in humans not little rats running around on their little ratty wheels um a study showed that doing 150 minutes of moderate aerobic exercise per week or 40 to 65 minutes of high intensity interval training both increased clotho levels by the same amount wow so uh, 60 minutes in a week i could be doing like high intensity in kettlebells which yep. you can't see, but I've got some on the floor here. Or I could be walking or light jogging or cycling 150 minutes per week. That's not all that much. It's not. You know, when you really think about it, I'm so glad you brought that up. Um, you know, one of the things that I've noticed, you know, it seems like, so here's this guy in, in Los Angeles that I would go study with and go observe because he was such a, complete outlier and anomaly in terms of his mastery of both martial arts and healing. Wow. The guy could be driven over by a truck. It was fascinating. He would hang. I don't, don't do this at home. <laughs> just blame. Home. And I've never done this just so you know, he would hang 500 pounds from his testicles demonstrating his ability of his mind to overcome his body. Now, I don't think you need to do that. If you have two kids, you just raise your kids, right? Like, you don't need to do that. But what was amazing to me is the common theme of these great masters and sages was that they used really healthy healing, living alkalinizing foods 
the youth intentionally plant herbs, plant medicine and herbs, and then they use movement and they use meditation. Now his movement looked fancy because it was martial arts and it was Qigong, all of which I love and practice still to this day. But the key is he was moving. He was moving his body and it was built into the culture to just move. I mean, gentle Tai Chi is basically super low grade aerobic activity, walking, deep breathing yeah. and walking. We're going to do a video later on about um, some breathing techniques that Fiona and I love. Yeah. And um, I was planning on doing a couple videos to show some basic Qigong exercises. But the key is movement is medicine. Movement equals clotho. Yep. Yep. Breathe the God medicine. inside your cells. Imagine <laughs> if you were doing FOT, cordyceps, and your 150 aerobics or your 45 to 65 minutes of interval training a week, what you could do to those amazing clotho genes. Yeah. And, you know, get this, you know, if you've been diagnosed with kidney disease, fatigue comes with that. Yeah. There was a really cool, two cool studies about cordyceps, not clotho studies, but I do want to mention these because, you know, if, you, if you've had kidney disease and you feel tired, you know, it's, it becomes a self-perpetuating cycle because then you're tired or you're not doing as much and we need you, you need you, I need me to be moving. So cordyceps has this incredible invigorating effect on the body, but in a way that's not like caffeine. And, and so what it does is there was a study that looked at bench press. Now this doesn't, this isn't an argument for the bench press, but people who took cordyceps before training were able to increase the weight that they could bench press by 13%. That's a lot. I mean, that's a lot of weight, right? I mean, that's a big percentage. And then they did another study looking at squats. I don't know why I'm, I'm invisibly doing a squat here, but it, let's say I was doing a, a, a bar squat, right? I would, I would be able to increase the number of reps post fatigue, something like 20 to 25%. So what that tells us for those of us that are just mere mortals is that cordyceps really invigorates your body's self-healing regenerative and recuperative powers to give you more strength now you may not be bench pressing or squatting but you might have kids that you need to deal with or you you want that extra strength from within to really like wake up and face your day and be like all right cool i know i may be going through kidney disease but if you see our other video on quantum physics i've now got energy to dream up some new possibilities and also just to feel good. And you know, when we feel good a little bit, we make better choices. And then we make better choices, we feel good, we make better choices, and it sort of becomes this super positive, self-propagating cycle. So go cordyceps. And I'm laughing too, because when Matt and I were together in Cancun, just a bit over this time last year, he would we would go to the gym in the mornings and he would take his cordyceps before going to the gym. And he told me that's exactly why he was taking it. So I know that you take it for that reason. Yeah, you know, I mix it up in um, I mix it up in my drinks in the morning, and then of course the kidney advance and kidney prime products, which are two formulas that Duncan and Fiona formulated, and then I've come in and helped with the production on that. Which you can learn more about. Um, have Foti and Cordyceps in them. Yes, the exactly. We want to. Yeah, we want to we want to boost your clotho level. So hopefully you've had a basic 101 on clotho. Um, again, your nephrologist may never have heard of it. Um, again, this woman that came out and spoke to us about it, she was a top nephrologist out of one of the major universities in the US and hospitals, and she was very excited about it. So I think it's something that we'll start to hear more about as time goes on. But as you remember, 30 years from a discovery for it just to get into the textbooks to get spoken about, I think we may be waiting a while. But you don't have to wait for your experts yeah. and your doctors to learn about it. Now, hopefully you've got some basics and you feel free to go digging around on the internet and having a look about clotho. And if you head over to kidneycoach.com, we've got an article there specifically just on clotho and another one about um FOT and the herb FOT we've actually got two we've got um a article on there about uh, cordyceps and then another article about FOT and it will talk about clotho in that article as well cool awesome, awesome. all right guys we'll see you next time hopefully this has been useful remember to subscribe below bye